Hi, I'm Delta Work, and I am from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 3, and today I am going to do um, a makeup tutorial that is inspired by the fall. I'm going to do a smoky eye and a very dark lip because the fall is upon us, and I'm a pumpkin spice lady. I'm the Ugg Boots lady, and I am the Infinity Scarf lady. I'm the lady that you hate for the, all those reasons, so let's do our makeup. I like to uh, start my makeup with uh, a clean face and moisturizer, let that set for a while. And I cannot stress enough using a primer. I use a pretty decent amount, I put it all over. For today's makeup, I'm not gonna be blocking out my eyebrows, I'm just gonna be sort of lengthening them here. So I'm gonna start with uh, a foundation and I use um, a pretty thick stage foundation just because my beard is so dark. And this technique, uh, it's just called stippling, where you would just really keep pushing the foundation into your skin. And I like to get back here as well. Um, if you're, especially if you're doing drag or you're wearing this much makeup, I use um, sort of a translucent -y loose powder. And I'm really generous with this powder. And you gotta beat your mug, you know, as they say, like, oh, you're so beat, but like literally, like beat your mug, you know what I'm saying? And it, look, it may look messy. I mean, some people do a cleaner application, but I mean, consider this your canvas. This is your workspace. You can also put foundation over your lips if you're maybe gonna really overdraw them, or um, sometimes that'll save you from staining. Some lipsticks have so much pigmentation in them that they stain. Uh, that could help you quite a bit. So I'm gonna start with uh, my contouring. Um, I contour really, really, really heavy because um, you know, my face, my features are not extremely strong. I have very small eyes. I have, um, I kind of do have high cheekbones, but I also have like really high, like under my cheekbones and, and that's called fat. Um, so I'm going to chisel this out as much as I can. And then, you know, it, it works. Once the wigs on and everything, it works. So I'm going to go like right in here with sort of a neutral color. Um, it's a, it's like a, a mid-tone brown. It's a little reddish. Um, so it blends well with my blush color once I add that over it. So I dig in there pretty, pretty generously. And I mean, I literally start chiseling and carving. So like I said, it might look crazy, but it'll make sense later. And I go all the way from like the top of my ear, all the way down here to like the corner of my mouth, because it's going to give you the impression that everything's a little lighter and that you're kind of smiling all the time when maybe you're not smiling. And you want to go underneath the apple of your cheek, or if you don't have an apple where you would think an apple would be. I'm going to do that underneath my jaw with the same color of powder. And for more coverage all the way down, because I am trying to conceal this as much as possible and highlight this jaw area, I'm going to use a, a brush that has a, can cover more area, essentially. You want this to be the darkest area and then you want it to feather out. And then don't forget to get here in your ears to just knock off some of that translucent powder. Okay, so now I'm gonna use blush over the contour. So that's gonna bring in the color. And I use that right on the contour. And then I also like to do it on my chin as well to bring the color up. So there's color coming from everywhere. And this is the area where you start feathering Feather all this blend in. This is the contour that's in, and again, it's really, really strong. It looks kind of like a crazy old lady. But now I'm gonna start highlighting underneath in the area. Some people call this cooking when you put lots of powder on your face. So I'm gonna go underneath from here all the way under to the corner of my mouth on both sides with translucent powder. And these are like stripes. I mean, these are, this is war paint. If you're putting on, if you're painting your face like this, this is, you're ready for war. And see, if you, this area here that I just did, the, the line that I drew, if you keep this down like that, you start to look like a monkey. So you don't wanna, you don't, this this adds weight right here. So you wanna slim this area as much as possible. You can push that in higher. And what, I mean, I consider this like, you know, you're cheating their face a little bit. So see there, that's like a little higher, and then this is like more monkey-ish. So you don't wanna, you know. It's, you play with the proportion. You play with what you're comfortable. I mean, if you wanna look like a monkey, go for it. We're gonna leave it like that, and then we'll 
blend it out, see where we go. So my next step is gonna be to highlight under here and all around here. I'm gonna be wearing a lace front wig, so I'm not necessarily gonna dodge and burn that area in, but I might wanna burn in the, this area here. So I can use um, that same mid-sized brush with the same contour color, and I can sort of do this. I'm gonna be wearing a dark wig, so. And even with a light wig, some people will use the same contour color. It just kind of slims your face in a bit, softens you. This is not like makeup for like the faint of heart, I don't think. So I'm gonna start highlighting this whole area and I'm just gonna use a flat white. Um, it seems very stark, but as I said, it, it makes sense. And I use like a, just a, the same brush that I would use for all my highlight is, looks like that. And generally my highlight is all either white or um, a translucent powder. And I just take it all around this like eye socket, kind of underneath. And this is, um, I would guess I would call this kind of like an eyeshadow priming because this area is now gonna have an even playing field. And you don't wanna put this brush, any of these brushes, really too hard on your face because you're gonna start pulling off the powder and then the foundation, and you don't wanna do that. My next step is going to be eyebrows. I do my eyebrows with shadow and I lengthen them a bit, so I probably start here a little further down, like the corner of this eye, where this meets is usually where I will do it. And then you can arch it in however you want. I will probably do a little bit of a higher arch on this. I'll fill it in a little bit thicker. I do my eyebrows wet with eyeshadow. I use a slant brush, a very inexpensive brush, so wet the brush. And then take some of the excess water off on just a paper towel or... And then pick the color of eyebrow that you're gonna do. So I'm gonna mix two colors, actually. I'm gonna use this burgundy kind of color. So this mid-color brow that is kind of dark um, is gonna work for pretty much any look. So again, I'm gonna start this brow uh, a little bit further in than where the hair actually grows, just because I want my brows to be sort of longer and more voluptuous and um, judgy, maybe. So do your starting point, which for me is here. For me, it's always a game of balance because I may be talking when I'm doing my makeup or listening to music or something, and then I'll look up and like this brow will be Marilyn Monroe and this brow will be Groucho Marx. And then you have to like start evening them out and somewhere you become like Marilyn Marx. There's no absolute rule with makeup, I don't think. It's all about what makes you feel happy, what makes you feel powerful. So I'm gonna start here. I'm not gonna finish the eyebrows. I'm just gonna start here as sort of a guide, and then I'm gonna go right into my nose contour and then my uh, eyeshadow. Contouring my nose and my eyeshadow, I'm gonna be using the same color that I've been using all along under the jaw, under the, uh, the cheek, um, here on the sides, and that's sort of that mid-tone, kind of rosy brown. And I'm gonna use uh, this double-sided brush this side's kind of flat, this side's a little angular. I'm just gonna put it right into there. I really contour my nose uh, pretty pretty deeply because I, uh, I like to look like I can't breathe. Um, I want a very small nose. If you want a large nose, you can have a full on like bell pepper if that's what you want. So I'm gonna carve right in underneath the eyebrow. So I start there with that brush, and then I take a different brush. And this is just kind of a flat brush. And I take the same powder, and I continue it down. On both sides. And these are truly like racing stripes. And I'm gonna go right into the white for the color that's gonna go down the bridge or down the front of my nose. I'm going right back into the brown. And I'm brown nosing. Feather it out. You can put these strong lines in as long as they feather out into another highlight or another contour. Again, this is very, very strong, but I am in fact painting for the stage. And now I'm gonna go inside my eye with the white right inside the socket. 
this look is a smoky eye, so I'm not doing um, an, a, a prominent eyelid on this at all. So I'm not necessarily worried about whitening this area or putting a, col a lighter color into this area because this is all going to be black. The entire area is going to be black. So, but I do want this corner to have a point where it ends and it becomes uh, my skin tone. So this will be sort of a barrier. Back in with more white, same color, same brush, underneath the brow bone. And all the way out, because I'm gonna yank this, like this eye is gonna be really, really yanked. And the beautiful part about doing a smoky eye, some people say, a lot of drag queens say, that a smoky eye is the easiest eye to do. If you're running out of time and you do not have enough time to get your eyes done, queens will say, oh, I'm just gonna throw on a smoky eye. It'll be fine, I can do that in 15 minutes. Before you do any other colors or dark eyeshadow, I would take your translucent powder and that powder brush that you used earlier, knock some of it off and put it right underneath your eyes. This is gonna catch any other eyeshadow that falls down. I'm gonna go right with that same brush that was just in the white eyeshadow and just put that lightest part of my makeup right into the black. And you're gonna go right in on your lid and start laying that in. And then start doing small little circles. So these little circles, just like this, is what's gonna smoke this out. That's essentially a smoky eye, but we're not gonna stop there because I want you know, I want it dramatic, so back in with black eyeshadow. Goes a little more intense. And then I'm gonna take that other brush, the double-sided brush, and I'm gonna take the angled part, and I'm gonna go back in with the black. A smoky eye doesn't mean black eyeshadow. It just means a technique. So if you would prefer to have a color, and smoke it out, that just means it's blended. So I'm gonna take this, as I said, and I'm putting it underneath. Same black eyeshadow, a little bit of a different brush. And I'm gonna take it right along here, underneath the eye, but not inside my eye yet. And I said this was gonna be yanked, so taking it right along here. Back into that rosy mid-tone brown. And I'm gonna start blending the black out into the white eyeshadow with that brush. You can build this with uh, your mid-tone color first, if, if that's what you wanna do. That's not what I wanna do in this case, but if you're more comfortable with that, starting lighter and going darker and then darker as you go, that's totally your prerogative and that may make you feel a little more comfortable with doing something so intense. More brown eyeshadow, right into the area where technically, a, if you were doing a, another eye, a crease eye, sort of where that crease would be but you're not really putting a crease in, you're just putting a blending point. This, again, is a game of just building. I mean, now that I blended that out, I'm like, oh, I feel like this is too gray, it needs to be darker. Because I want it to be a little more berry, I'm gonna go into a palette that has a lot of other colors in it, and I'm gonna choose a color that I think will make this pop a little bit more, make it look a little, maybe more fall, wine, berries, like all those colors. I'm gonna go probably right in here. This is with that same brush that had the white, the black, the brown, the blending, the cleaning. It's the same brush. I, I just, it's just the way I know how to do it. And then just stick it right in where, in between the two, the brown and the, where the brown and the black were connecting. And therein starts to come this wine color. Back into the white, just a little tiny bit. You don't have to cover the whole brush. Tap off the excess, and then you're gonna go right underneath the brow bone to where your eyebrow is gonna make its little tail. The white part here, you can start blending that with this other black here. And what this does is it just kind of cleans it up. I'm gonna move on to using a liquid eyeliner. So I'm gonna go right inside the corner of my eye. And because this is not Again, an eye with a crease, and we're not really featuring eyeliner as a shape. I'm not really worried about 
how exact this line is. And while it's still wet, I'm gonna take this brush, the, the angled side, and I'm gonna just press it in. And this is like smudging, essentially. And I can go back in with that brush and black eyeshadow. Smoke this out again. Back to this brush. More feathering. I'm gonna use a black gel liner for the inside of my eyes, and then I'm going to use a brush that is has a silicone tip on it. So this is not a feather brush, this is not a hair brush, um, this is not an art brush, this is literally made with a silicone tip on it so it's very bendable. I'm going to press in there and clean it up a little bit, just right off of there, because I wanna cover the whole silicone tip without getting chunks of it on there. I'm just using it to fill in my waterline. From the very corner of my eye, all the way out. The natural lashes will now have the cream to connect to the other so that they all feather together. I think at this point, the eyeshadow is pretty much where I want it for this eye. This is a smoky eye that I'm doing um, with sort of a berry hint to it. And now in order to make this have full shape, I'm gonna finish my eyebrow. I'm gonna go back to that angle brush. I'm gonna go back into the water or any kind of sort of contact lens solution that you wanna use in order to wet the brush. Back into this burgundy color and a little bit of the brown. And we're gonna finish the eyebrow. So you can see now that how significantly different the drawn on brow is to like the natural brow. So uh, my next step is gonna be to put on eyelashes. I like to start the eyelash application with coating my eyelashes in mascara. You can use any mascara you like. I like just any traditional rich black mascara. Um, I'm gonna coat my entire top lashes and my bottom lashes uh, with this and then I'm gonna curl them. For me, the purpose of putting on this mascara is just to thicken up the lashes that are here and to knock off some of the powder. Putting on this mascara before putting on your false eyelashes will help connect the two together and make them look as realistic as possible as eyelashes this long could look. And the top I use, you know, you use strokes along the lashes to pull them out. And on the bottom, I just take this and rub it across the lashes and take a lash curler and I press and walk it along so you're not squeezing in one area too long. And now I'm going to place uh, false eyelashes right along my lash line. You can use any eyelash adhesive you like. I choose to use a weaving bond. And I use the back of my hand as sort of a workspace for it. So I just squeeze out a little dab of it, like that much. And I use tweezers. And I hold on to the lash and rub the lash glue or the adhesive right along the side. And I take this lash and I stick it as close as I can to the lash line. And I like to tilt the lash down in the corner and then kind of feather it up. You can go back in with mascara or liquid liner and touch up the areas that have powder on them. And right now I'm, I'm going over my own lashes and the false lashes together. And I'm now gonna put on a bottom eyelash. And the bottom eyelash it's technically a top pair of lashes, but I'm using them as a bottom pair. And then the next step is gonna take the liquid liner again, and I'm gonna use the liquid liner inside my eye where the glue, the gel liner, and the powder are all inside. I'm gonna take this to connect everything. So I'm gonna take this brush and just start feathering it in so that everything looks equally dark inside. And then what I like to do just because I feel like I want it to be even more dramatic here in the corner is I will take the same brush and I will use it to draw even more artificial lashes here in the corner just as feather strokes. And then my final step for the eye is going to be to take the flat brush again back into the white eyeshadow 
and I'm gonna take it underneath the eye to clean up what's under there. So I think I'm about ready. Um, you'll know you're done with your eye makeup when you feel like you see balance when you feel like they're about as equal as they're gonna get. No one's eyes are perfect, so they're not gonna be twins. They're gonna be, you know, hopefully, at least distant cousins. So you never, I mean, it's not gonna be an exact science. So I think I'm about done. And I think it's time to start on the lips. With eye makeup this dark, I would normally do um, a very pale lip, but because it's so smoky, I kind of want to keep with a, a witchy feel, something um, very dark. So I'm going to do something sort of based in like a wine color, uh, deep berry, and uh, I think that's going to make it very, very dramatic. I start doing my lips uh, by getting any sort of powder from around the mouth and pressing it in. When you're using a powder puff at any point on your face, you don't want to use the powder puff and drag it across your face. That's not going to help you in any way. That's going to actually start pulling your makeup off. So you always want to pat. So I'm going to use like a mid-tone um, auburny liner to start and then I might go deeper with another liner after the lipstick's on to see if I can get to exactly where I want to with uh, this color of berry. I like to overdraw my lips quite a bit so I'm going to start with the neutral color and then go back in with something darker if I want to deepen them. Um, it's easier to start a little bit lighter with this and then go darker if you need to um, for any mistakes. And I essentially uh, follow the same line of my lips. I just do it on the outside of them. So you can recreate the shape if you want. For consistent coverage, I would suggest using um, the pencil all over your lips and then put the uh, lipstick uh, on that. It'll give you the same coverage. Um, it'll give you extra coverage, but it'll give you the same color. If you want to feel like a total professional, you will use a lip brush inside of your lipstick. It'll also provide a little less like contamination. Um, but you can take it right out the tube if you like. And I feel like I want this to be maybe a little bit darker, less like brick color. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a darker liner and I'm gonna smudge that liner in around the corners so it just deepens it and gives it a little bit more of a 3D effect. If you're making any mistakes on your lips, you can go back in with um, your powder puff or a sponge and you can just stipple along the bottom. And then the final step, I want this a little bit darker so I'm going to use um, the lip brush and then I'm gonna use a dark gloss. I'm gonna put it right on the brush. Again, start with less. I think we're done. And all we need is a wig to go from this to this. My name is Delta Work. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this. And if you don't do this full face, I hope you take some techniques and apply them to your daily life and make something really, really fun, really, really glamorous. And I hope you beat your mug. Hey, squirrel friend. When one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead. I support you.